It's intermission time at the Tarrant County Convention Center in Fort Worth during the Rowan and Martin show, the matinee show. And, uh, you know, here they are, the number one stars of the number one television show. Hi, Dan Bobby. Rowan and Dick Martin. Oh, Welcome hi. to Texas. Thank you. You like the first half of the show? I liked it very much, and I think they're a great matinee audience. How do you feel about well, it? Well, they were, they were very good. We were a little bit concerned because there were so many youngsters out there, and, of course, we're not doing a youngster-oriented show. And... Uh, they were very responsive, and uh, all the people that we brought with us have uh, gone over very well, which they usually do, but uh, we, they were a surprisingly good audience for him. And it's some new people for them. Uh, Erwin C. Watson has never been down here, and uh, Dave Madden, who's a regular on our show, has never been here. Skiles and Henderson, who were on the Dean Martin Summer Show for a whole season, were never here. So it's kind of nice to bring new people down for them. You know, really, uh, it's Nielsen who says that you're the number one television show. And I often wonder, you know, that's a vulnerable spot to be in, fellas. Do you sometimes wish that maybe you were, you know, fourth or fifth or maybe even second? Well, it's very likely that we might be. <laughs> so, <laughs> as long so as you stay in the top ten, you're all you right. Stay, if you can stay where the ratings justify the cost of the show, I guess that you'll uh, be a success on television. It's nice to be number one and uh, we're very happy about it, very proud about it. But even in that position, I would have to say, I don't really believe the ratings uh, all that much because there are a lot of fine shows that are down there, 20, 22, 23, and uh, I'm sure more people watch those shows than are indicated by the ratings. Dave, what do you think your audience is primarily? Do you have any way of knowing? It's now uh, quite uh, uh, universal. At first, it started off with kind of a, a metropolitan uh, audience, as was indicated by the national overnight Nielsen's from New York. We uh, jumped on them right away as soon as we started. But in the national Nielsen's, where they take them in the smaller towns in the Midwest, uh, we were like 47th, and it took us 14 shows to get to number one, uh, which showed that we gradually got the adults, but we got the kids right away. Is this uh, having a top television show the thing that you've always wanted, Dan? Well, it's certainly uh, very gratifying to do your thing on TV and to have so many people like it. There's a lot of things still to do that we want to do. We have a picture coming out. Well, we haven't made it yet. We're going to make it this uh, spring. It's coming spring since we finished taping the series at MGM, and uh, we'd like that to be a, a big hit because films are uh, uh, the great media to be successful in. And, uh, well, they last a lot longer as a rule. If you can get a good series of pictures going, you can do those for quite a number of years. A uh, television series really depends on the immediate fickleness of the public, and that's a pretty fickle group. Will it uh, uh, star the rest of the company, the film I'm talking about? No, this, this no, this is a uh, uh, kind of a far out comedy that uh, will be in the house of Pearl Bailey. Uh, good, good people, but it's, you know, we're not playing to uh, what we play on television. It's an entirely different thing. Just as our television show is different from our personal parents' show. There's no doubt about it that uh, the show Lapin has created a whole new vernacular. And uh, some of the expressions like Saka to me, how did that come about? Well, Saka to me was a jazz expression before we picked up on it, but it wasn't generally known. It was just a very esoteric thing. We used it in an entirely different sense. Uh, with Faye Saka to me on our show, you kind of get hit with water, or you 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 get here come the judge and other jurists around the country have written to us. Some Supreme uh, Court guys are gone down the line saying that they walk in their courtroom and many people say, here comes the judge. Yeah, it's, it's funny how you know, they pick up on these expressions. Dick, was, uh, the, you bet your sweet Biffy, was that your own? Yeah, we used to do a lot of these in our nightclub back. They were just expressions, not geared to get big laughs. They were just 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 geared to get big laughs. That we used for years, and then uh, all of a sudden they caught on. Uh, we've, we've done a lot of them, uh, we've done a lot of them uh, but are now catching on this year. Catching on this year. Uh, weren't even on last year. So what about Joanne Worley's uh, Another Chicken Joke? Another chicken joke. That's why. I wonder, I really, 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 I
she was a very obedient uh, cook now. Yeah, and last year, and we last did, year, for some reason, we, we started some chicken jokes, and, and she just stuck her head out of the joke world one night. Is that another chicken joke? And it started. So every time she felt like doing it, she'd throw it in. We got to be the chicken joke girl. Yes, I'm one of your cat people. I just wanted to know what you guys thought about that chicken joke girl. Yeah, Really get it, and some of those things are kind of complicated. Well, they're fairly complicated, but we have a very professional group of people. Artie Johnson, Nicole Meehan, right? They they bring everything they do right up to the front. They're very creative and they're professionals.